Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Tammy Stoffel with Stampin' Tammy, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Washougal, Washington. Uh, I come live every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to uh, share my love of crafting and hopefully inspire you. Tonight, we're going to be making a card um, featuring more designer series paper from the Whimsy and Wonder uh, designer series paper pack. And this is the beautiful, beautiful paper we're gonna work with. Um, I love these trees. There's um, beautiful um, foil accents throughout, uh, gold, and then uh, with an iridescent shimmer to it. And then we're also going to incorporate the um, Evergreen Trees Punch. And this is part of the Evergreen Elegance um, Bundle. And here a couple, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, I put out a poll on my Facebook page um, with three different options. And one was the Whimsy and Wonder um, Suite, which uh, I showcased last week. We're using the more paper this week. And then the other was the um, Evergreen Elegance uh, stamp set and the punch. And then the Peaceful Cabin bundle. So tonight we're going to marry the two, the punch and the Whimsy and Wonder paper. So to get started, we're going to need a card base of um, mint macaron. And this is a standard card base that is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. Um, and just a couple of little housekeeping tips before we get uh, too far into the process here. Um, I don't have a second device that I'm streaming, so I can't monitor the comments, uh, but please do uh, comment and uh, like and share my video. If you do share, if you'd put the um, shared in the comments, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Um, after the uh, video is over, I will be uploading this to um, YouTube. So be sure and check out my YouTube channel, um, like and subscribe to it. And um, I hope you enjoy what I have for you tonight. Okay, so like I said, this is Mint Macaron card base, and it is uh, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So we're just gonna fold that. Scoot my trimmer over here. And grab a bone folder, and let's give that edge just a nice burnish. Okay, so we're going to cut a piece of the designer series paper and I realized uh, today when talking with my dear friend Colleen that I had not ever really shown the trimmer on um, any of my videos I think part of it is because of space limitations and um, just trying to make this process go a little quicker but um, our trimmer is uh, pretty uh, pretty wonderful actually it's got two blades it's got a cutting blade, it's got a scoring blade, it has um, measurements in, um, in inches and centimeters at uh, the top, the middle, and the bottom. It has an arm that swings out, and this arm will go up to, I don't know if you can see that there, it goes up to 17 inches. So you can lay out a pretty good sized piece of paper um, to make your cuts. Uh, it is designed to fit a full um, 12 inches, which is um, fabulous for what we do here. And then it just kind of locks in place here. Um, blades are, um, replacement blades are available. It's got um, another ruler on the edge of the bar here and a, a cutting groove. So it is, um, it's very, um, it's very well designed and it travels nicely too. Okay, so our card base, 
we have um, four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to want to cut my uh, designer series paper um, down just a little bit more than that. Um, we'll take a quarter of an inch off of all sides. So we'll cut that at four inches. So we're going to go four inches across and five and a quarter down. Slide that scoring tool out of the way. And we're gonna put this at four. I think you can see what I'm doing here. Looks like it, yes. So we're gonna line this up at four. Close the bar and just slide. And it cuts very nicely. Um, sometimes you can get, uh, especially when you're cutting with the cardstock, you can get a little um, kind of a bend or distorted P edge. And oftentimes I find that I press too hard on that cutting blade. So just a little pro tip there, you don't need to press hard, just slide. Okay, so this is four inches, and then we're gonna cut at five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. And so, like I was saying, there are replacement blades available for this. So if you find you're getting um, frayed edges and you discover you're not pressing too hard, then it's probably time to change out the blade. So those are um, available and easily changed out. There's this nice little, this little notch right here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, right in here where your blade um, will line up and snap in and snap out. All right, so we'll set that off to the side. And we are going to glue this onto the card front. My adhesive of choice is always the um, liquid adhesive or multi-purpose adhesive glue. It is um, available through Stampin' Up. It is affordable. It's $4 for a bottle. The bottle lasts a long time. And the thing that I like about it is that it really um, gives a good hold and it also gives you um, some ability to um, wiggle your paper because I am notorious for getting my um, paper set uh, a little crooked and then need to adjust it. Now, with the, um, the tape runners, the... Um, stamp an adhesive, you don't really have a wiggle room. Uh, some people really like that, so if that's an option um, that you prefer, then certainly we have that available as well. Um, but for me, that ability to wiggle just a little bit is really important. Okay, so we'll just give that a good smoothing, just like so. Alrighty, and isn't that darling? I mean, that uh, designer series paper really takes the stage. And there's not much else that you need to do for this card already. So I did do um, a couple of things here. So I have already um, die cut and with the um, layering circles, a um, scalloped edge, and then the next uh, size down circle just so I have the very small edge here okay so those are the um, layer layering circles dies and then I punched these trees using the evergreen punch and then you notice I think you can probably see it here let's see here there is a little extra texture to those, okay? I put this these die cuts in the evergreen 
Forest 3D Embossing Folder. This is in the, um, an the annual catalog. And this is what it looks like. And look at all this fabulous texture. Beautiful, beautiful trees. Gorgeous. Um, makes some gorgeous uh, impressions on your paper. And really simple with all different kinds of um, of options. You can um, you can even use this with um, foil paper. Stunning, so stunning. So I actually I took these tree uh, cuts from using this uh, this punch, and then I just laid them in the folder and kind of tried to line them up with some of the trees. They don't line up. Um, perfectly but you know this is a uh, these are evergreens these are wild evergreens um, is what they're supposed to represent and they're not perfect um, they're not designed to be um, tree farm Christmas tree farm trees so we're going to use that as part of our um, put together and I'm not sure how many of those we're going to need but I made uh, two different colors and we'll just kind of see how it comes together Okay, so we need to put a sentiment on here. And let's see here. So from the whimsical trees, there is um, a couple of different options. I still ha I have one stamp that is outstanding somewhere, and I got to figure out where it is. It's in this craft room. It hasn't gone far. Um, I'm just not sure exactly where it's at. So we'll have to scratch that one off our list for right now. Um, so I think we may try this, which is. Um, from the Whimsical Trees, wishing you Christmas cheer and magical moments that last all year. Um, let's see how that comes together. So that would fit here. I haven't put my labels on here yet. But that's okay. So we'll just add this to the acrylic block. And um, hey, if you have subscribed um, for to my email um, newsletter or asked to be added to my newsletter mailing list, I have sent out a, an email today from, uh, it came from A. Weber, and it is from uh, Stampin' Tammy. Um, a Weber is the um, the hosting company that I use for my brand new newsletter, and there would have been an email um, coming to you for um, asking to confirm your subscription to my email newsletter. Um, if you could um, either confirm or say, "Oh, I don't really think I want that." Um, then go ahead and, and um, unsubscribe. Um, but I would love to be able to send that to you. And then later tonight, I'm going to hit the send button and send out that newsletter. And it um, is just um, short and sweet. Um, I'm fine tuning. It's a work in progress. And we'll see how that comes together. Um, so I'm going to start with mint macaron. I'm not sure what color of... Um, what color I really want to use for the, uh, the the sentiment here. But we'll start with Mint Macaron. We're going to stamp on here. This is scratch paper, and it's upside down. <laughs> That's why I always do and recommend a test run. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Um, maybe we'll try the evening evergreen. And 
and yeah, I might go for that. Okay. So I'm gonna clean my stamp off with the stamp with the um, chamois. Just because I've got quite a bit of ink on there. This Evening Evergreen is a new, um, one of the new in colors, and I haven't used it a lot, so that ink pad is still pretty juicy. And I wanna make sure that I don't create um, too much ink and make a big puddle. Okay, so again, we're gonna come back here with the um, Evening Evergreen. Just ink that up a little bit. And then we're going to stamp. And I think there's two sides. See how I got a little bit extra over here? I kind of inked it up a little bit. Um, a, a little too much pressure on the left side which I tend to do. I'm left-handed, so everything's kind of cockeyed to the left. Okay, so I'm just gonna smooth the edges. And we'll try this one more time. Okay, well, there you go. Just gonna have to roll with it. I think I made it worse instead of better. But what else is new, right? Welcome to Tammy's world. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so we're also going to add a little bit of trees on here, okay? So um, yesterday on my Tuesday tip, I, um, I showed you this. And this is using the um, how to make the best of your ink pads and um, how to choose when you are on a limited budget. You can really get, get by with um, a few of the darker colors. And when you want a lighter color, you just stamp off on a piece of scratch paper and then stamp your image. And so that's what I've done here. And I think these trees are really quite pretty. So I'm gonna add a little bit of um, super light shadow on this circle. Those trees came from the Peaceful Deer. And in fact, here they are. Just gonna add, I'm gonna take the Evening Evergreen and then we're gonna give it a try here and see what we get for, um, for shading. It's pretty dark and that's still dark. And there's third generation. And there's fourth generation. Um, I can see where I pressed hard and, and kind of rocked at the very end. So I do want to avoid that. So let's just clean the stamp and give this a whirl. Okay. So we're going to do 
One, two, three, and there's four. Ooh, that looks good. I like that. Okay, let's try it a little bit more over here. One, two, three, and four. There we go. So what do you guys think? That is how you make the best of your ink pads. And you can create all these different gradients of color. It's harder to make a light color darker. You can only go just a little more intense by doing a second, um, uh, a second stamping. And in order to really be successful at doing that, you need to utilize a Stamparatus. And that's for another video, but we'll, uh, um, we'll roll with this here. Okay, so we're going to glue that on here using that liquid multi-purpose adhesive. Got to be, um, it's a fine line between not putting enough on so that you've got the wiggle room, usually just a very small amount and it will adhere quite well. Um, but you want a little bit more so you've got some wiggle room, but not too much so that you don't squish it out. You don't want to be squishy and have glue oozing. Okay. Now, isn't that pretty? It's starting to come together here. And thinking that we'll probably do some of this um, white glittered organdy ribbon and kind of a zigzag pattern underneath the, um, the sentiment circle. But for now, let's see how this is going to come together. Looks like we're going to um, trim off one tree here. And then we're going to layer it probably like so. And we're going to trim off let's see which one do I want to trim off um, I think I'm going to trim off this bigger one here Boy, you can hear the wind is really blowing out there here at our house. Um, I've got a, um, a hydrangea that's right out in front of this, um, this room that I use for crafting. And I can hear it kind of whipping around out there. Okay, so we're going to put these together first. And we're going to take a little bit of the... Um, I might use glue dots. So I want to use the the dark green, the evergreen, um, evening. Yeah, evening evergreen cardstock on the out 
on the top layer. So I'm going to put the glue dots here. And these glue dots um, are really um, stick well. So you can just um, take your die cut directly to the roll. All right. And then we're gonna layer these together. like so and then we're going to add this to the bottom of our sentiment making sure that i don't have the sentiment cockeyed um, and then we're going to put those directly on here So we'll grab some more of the um, of the glue dots, focusing down at the bottom. And that glue dot wanted to stick just a little bit, but just push it back on there, and we'll be fine. And I need one more. like so. On this edge, I just need to clean it up just a little bit. Okay, so we are all getting close to the end here already. That's looking good, you guys. Um, I am going to take a little bit of an, um, an old um, snail. I don't have any of the new adhesive open at this point because I still have some of this to um, use up. I'm just going to put a few strips of the adhesive on the back so that we can zigzag this um, ribbon. And then we're just going to fold it. Like so. And the nice thing about the um, this the um, tape runner for this is that you can peel that um, ribbon back off a little bit if you don't like the way that it's laying. Okay, so I like that. We're going to trim this edge off right about there. And set that off to the side. And then we're going to figure out where we want to put our sentiment. Do we want it down low? Do we want it dead center? I'm thinking um, lower so that it doesn't cover up all this beautiful, especially this big beautiful tree right here. So I'm going to put it down right here. We're going to put that up on dimensionals and then we'll be finishing up this card. Um, make sure that when you're making a card that you um, Always add a little something to your envelope and um, that way it's um, it's finished. It sends out a little bit of happy mail to someone. It's so fun to get a card in the mail and, um, and have this pretty envelope. It makes you want to really get in there and, and uh, see what see what someone has uh, has sent you. 
rather than a bill or junk mail. Um, I know snail mail can be incredibly frustrating at times because it's slow, but that's really the way to get these um, gorgeous beauties in the hands of the people that are important to you. Um, so my campaign is to um, actually get some Christmas cards out this year. I have not in um, quite a few years, and it's been um, incredibly um, dissatisfying for me. Okay, so there we go. And that is our card for tonight. Um, I hope that you like it. I will put a panel on the inside here, but I didn't get it out. The Whisper White, um, or Basic White actually, is what we have now. Um, card stock, I'll put that in here. And then add um, the Shadow of Trees um, stamped in here. You certainly can add another sentiment in here. This, um, the Whimsical Trees has several that would be beautiful in um I used the wishing you Christmas cheer and magical moments that last all year. And um, it, it would be nice uh, to really pull one of these two together. Um, May the love of the season fill your home and fill your heart uh, is another um, sentiment. And that's the one that's gone rogue in my stamp room. It's somewhere here and I'll find it. Um, just not tonight. So um, again, like I said, um, like and share um, comment on my video. Comments are immensely helpful to um, getting the word out for my tiny little crafting business. Um, this is what fuels my soul. Um, I'm a nurse. I work full time. And um, and this is a great uh, creative uh, release for me. So I truly enjoy that. I love bringing these videos to you. And the um, likes, comments, and shares are um, ways that can help that. Um, there also is the seasonal sale that's happening right now. That's through tomorrow. And that'll be until um, 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow evening. Um, the sale includes all individual ink pads that are the Stampin' Up! brand, not third-party um, brands like the Versamark or... Um, Memento Black Ink, um, but all of the Stampin' um, Classic Stampin' Pad um, ink pads are on sale. These are 15% um, off, all cardstock 10% off, and all dies in the annual catalog. Doesn't include the holiday catalog, just the annual catalog. All of those dies are 20% off. So those are some great savings. If you have a large wish list, um, you could sign up as a demonstrator. And before you say no, just hear me out. $75 gets you $125 worth of product. When you couple that with your savings on the cardstock and um, ink pads, you get more than $50 worth of free product and you don't have to sell a thing. There is no selling requirement. There are many, many, many people that take full advantage of the, um, of the savings and never, um, never sell a thing. If you wanted to continue to receive your demonstrator discount, then um, after your th first three month uh, period into your second three month quarter is where you would need to meet um, the what they call the sales uh, minimum and that doesn't mean you're selling to outside people that can be yourself and your mom or yourself and your best friend or just yourself it's a three hundred dollar quarterly um, minimum requirement and that's $300 before your discount. The discount is 20% off. So in reality, it's $280 uh, every three months. And um, that's how, how I signed up. And I started doing classes because I had a, um, a local uh, lady who owns a um, crafting studio reach out to me. And this was all pre-COVID. 
So I started teaching some classes for her. And then COVID hit. And so we've, you know, the classes have all been on hold. And this is how I'm reaching out to you now is trying to do these videos, um, sharing some of my um, love for crafting, um, doing YouTube, and hoping to inspire you. Um, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, just send me your email. I'll add you to that. Um, I will have some tutorials um, periodically that will go into the email that are exclusive to the email subscribers only. And uh, as always, follow me on YouTube and you'll see my, um, my videos kind of condensed all in one area. So I want to thank you all for your time tonight and appreciate your support. Have a good night, and we'll see you soon.